Hello, we're going to correct some untruths in this video. This should be a two or three parter. Now, I don't like untruths, but untruths are of three different varieties. As a translator of ancient Greek, let's go over the three of them really quick. Okay, we have agnosis, we have doxa, and we have the inverse of episteme. Okay, talking about opinions, Beliefs, feelings, conjectures, doxa. I feel, I believe. We have agnosis, which is ignorance, like a baby sticks its hand on a hot iron. It just doesn't know any better. And then we have another variety, the third type of untruth. All of these are untruths, okay? Ignorance, agnosis, okay? Feelings, beliefs, conjectures, i.e. doxa. And we have the inverse of episteme. We have the inverse of empirical criteria. We have uh, untruths of the bad variety, which is a lie. Why would someone lie? I don't know. Outside influence? Obviously, for me to conclude anything on this is pure conjecture. So I won't draw any conclusions. I will leave it up to you to determine which of the three it is. Doxa, inverse episteme, or agnosis. Okay? So... Let's talk about lenses. Okay, here we have a cheap little lens sitting on its, on its little wire there. And I'm going to talk about a video. I'm going to give you a link to it. Then a bunch of people um, pointed me to this video. And uh, my mind, of course, is always full all the time translating and thinking about field theory. Okay, it doesn't matter what the lens is sitting on. The lens doesn't know if it's sitting on an FX body or a DX body. Lenses don't know or care what is under them. They are only fed data on what to focus at, whether to engage the VR, some distance information that's fed to the camera for a computation of flash, which of course is important. There is no lens change because a lens is on an FX or a DX camera. Doesn't care. Light density in lumens is the same if given the identical situation. Okay? Let's pretend this is a G-series with an internal vibration reduction motor. Okay? Of course it's not. Doesn't make any difference. The density down here, if this is our FX sensor, and this is our DX sensor, the density per lumens, given the exact same identical spot, is the same. Okay? Obviously there is light fall off. Every lens, whether it's an FX lens or a DX lens, has a project a rectangular um, projection of light onto the sensor. It's all circular, FX or DX. Okay? Obviously the difference is crop factor. Say for example the uh, Nikon D7100 versus the D810, which I've got test samples of and follow me on part two of this video. The 7100 is a CMOS sensor, is 23.5 by 15.6 millimeters. Okay? It's a DX sensor. D810 is a CMOS also, it's 35.9, effectively 36 millimeters by 24. Obviously, this isn't to scale. Let's draw a little bit better to scale FX and DX sensor. Please follow along with me in this video. We'll get to some good parts and we'll take a look at a video that you'll have to conclude whether it's doxa, inverse episteme, or agnosis. In other words, whether it's conjecture, it's ignorance, or it's just a flat-out lie. Okay, I'm not going to mention the person's name. I'm going to give you a link to it. And uh, this person, um, see, starts off, there's just so many errors in it, and I mark each one. At three minutes and three seconds, he says, let's take a look at DXO mark numbers. He asks the question, are full frame lenses sharper on crop bodies? Then he re references endlessly, I think about 10 or 12 times, it's called perceptual megapixels, which is unique to DXO mark. There is no such thing as a perceptual megapixel. It is not a measurement. It is an overall score. It has no quantification whatsoever and thus subject to the same failings as any other metric system. There is no such thing as a perceptual megapixel. Okay? Doesn't exist. Pixel density is part of image resolution. Sharpness is as per the lens. Okay? The two combined, resolving power and lens sharpness, both equal image quality. Also, AD converters and the image processor and the firmware. When it comes to digital cameras, there are other variables concerned, but leaving those out, 
everything else being equal. Light density remains the same in lumens. The lens doesn't give a damn. It doesn't know what is underneath it. Now the camera knows if you have any decent modern DSLR, it knows whether you have, obviously, a DX or an FX lens on it. And it will adjust the crop value proportionately. Okay? Obviously, that is going to change the effect of megapixels. Like on a D810, if you stick a, a DX uh, lens on the uh, FX D810, uh, the effect of crop is, uh, was it 16 megapixels? Uh, on the D700, it's far worse, which is why you would never want to stick a DX lens on any of the D700, for example. Okay, so three, at 3 minutes and 3 seconds, he says, let's take a look at DXO mark numbers. Are full frame lenses sharper on crop bodies? And then he says, we will know definitely, we will know something definitive by looking at DXO mark numbers. Then he brings up a reference to the 5D Mark II Canon 14 perceptual megapixels versus the Canon 7D, which is an 18 megapixel. We'll talk about the 24 to 70 lens on it, and it is a perceptual megapixel, P standing for perceptual, of 7. This is nonsense. I've got the test shots. I'm going to post them here in the links below. I'm going to talk about this in the second video. He says, at 7 minutes and 5 seconds in this video, he says, Are full frame lenses sharper on crop bodies? No. He actually doesn't just say, you know, he posts this. This is a screenshot. He says, definitely not. Well, just take a look at my test shots. This is not true. They are sharper. Okay? Every lens, okay, every single lens projects a circular image. Doesn't matter if it's DX or FX. If it's an FX, if it's an FX lens, it's just a bit larger to cover the FX sensor. If it's a DX uh, lens, it's just large enough to cover the DX sensor. But it doesn't matter whether it's uh, the most expensive lens made in the world by Zeiss or by NASA or a cheap Vivitar lens. Every lens suffers the same thing: edge coma, corner to corner sharpness. Now let's take a look. Let me turn on the lamp here. Let's take a look at an image, say for example, of an FX. Okay, here we have the circular image projection. You can't really see it. Right there. Let me bring. Let me stop the lens down so you can actually see it here. Okay, do you see that sharp point right at the center there? Every lens, it doesn't matter how expensive it is, the better ones are better at smoothing that out than the cheaper ones are, but every lens in the world has a center focus density which is higher than at the edge. So, is an FX lens sharper on a DX camera? Let's say we got a crappy lens here. It's a crappy FX lens like the 24 to 120, a notoriously crappy lens. Here we have uh, corner to corner coma. Okay, so here's the FX image. So let's stick it on a DX camera. Okay. Now, let's get our effective DX range. Oh my god, yes, it is sharper. Now our corner to corner coma on the DX image is sharper. So this is absolutely untrue. He said this is not true, but it is true. He says specifically at 705. Are full frame lenses sharper on crop bodies? No. And then he says verbally, definitely not. Well, this is absolutely not true at all. At 147 into the video, he says, um, you do not get the total light gathered if you stick an FX lens on a DX camera. Now, you don't get, obviously, the FX projection, but this is definitely not true. Per square millimeter on the APS-C, uh, or the FX sensor, to the FX sensor, the total light remains the same. Light density remains the same in lumens per square millimeters. Obviously, there is a fall off from center, but it doesn't have nothing to do whether it's APS-C or FX sensor. Okay, the fall off is going to remain the same. The lens doesn't know or give a damn whether there's an APS-C or a full frame sensor sitting underneath it. You need to talk about pixel density and image sharpness and combination, there's no such thing 
as a perceptual megapixel. This is a holistically invented phantasm of DxO mark. Now I'm going to state something here that's pure conjecture on my part. Since this particular video endlessly and at the very end tells you to go to DxO mark, I am going to conjecture, pure speculation on my part, no empirical evidence whatsoever, someone might have it, that this person might be sponsored or paid by DxO Mark. You know, if I start to hear barking noises and I start to see puppy chow, and I see a dog house, it's not too far for me to conjecture there might be a dog around. Okay, is this pure conjecture on my part? It sure is. Okay, at 149 he says, it becomes a totally different lens. Let's say this is an FX lens and we have a APS-C crop sensor right underneath it. Does this become a totally different lens? No, nothing changes about the lens. Does the POV, POV change? Well, yes, it certainly does. The field of view. The point of view, the crop sensor FOV obviously changes. If this is an FX lens, okay, all we're doing is cropping. It's an optical field of view. And 149, he says, it becomes a totally different lens. The lens doesn't become totally different. You have a different optical FOV crop. At uh, 427 in this video, he says, DX lenses are designed for DX to give you sharper results. Well, this is not true at all. I've got the links to the photographs. I have the $1,900 24 to 70 sitting on the D810, taking shots of this. If you want other shots, that's fine. Shooting at the same distance, 1 200th of a second, F4 at 70 millimeters and then I switch it over to the D7100. So we got the 36 megapixel FX sensor which has a much lower pixel density by the way and then I slap it on the D7100. Now the D7100 of course wherever my chalk went to has a much higher pixel density than does that of the uh, D810, here went my chalk. If, now let's just say this is the FX D3, uh, D810, okay, 36 megapixels, and this is the uh, D7100, 24.1 megapixels, okay. If the D7100 in pixel density were scaled up to the FX sensor, it would be a 54.1 megapixel sensor. Oh my god, why is that important? Well, let's talk about it in the next upcoming video, and then we're going to roll down some of the many more countless errors in the video that I'm going to link to you, okay? Because there are a lot of them. I can't cram them all into 15 minutes, okay? So stay tuned for video number two, and we're going to go down the list of additional errors in this video, okay? Please stay tuned for that.